Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. This is a bonus episode and it's going to be a very long one. As you know in my previous video, uh, I'm gonna link that video up above. I explained why I'm closing down only plants store. I'm not gonna explain that much in this episode, but basically I'm purging most of my collection and this is going to be available for both the international audience and for the local market as well. I'm gonna have to list down the terms and conditions because it's gonna be very long and I don't want thousands of you to ask me how this works. So I'm gonna read from my phone and then I'm gonna put on some beautiful uh, footage of plants. Uh, please do listen carefully as I uh, share with you the terms and conditions of the sh this shopping experience. And in this video, for those of you who are not shopping, feel free to sit back and relax because I share some foliage, I may share some interesting care tips and my experiences with the plants and you may learn some of the new species out there. So do not get stressed out if you are not shopping, just you know, make a cup of coffee, popcorn or whatever makes you relaxed and enjoy this episode. Alright, so let's get to it. First of all, we're working with Titik Hijau in this video and everything is up for exports and we have more information on that later. I will also put a timestamp now on the screen in case you want to skip to any part of the video. You want to jump straight ahead to it. I'm going to show the plants by genus. So go ahead and skip to it if it's more relevant to you. The deadline for the shopping event is the 18th of June on Saturday. Uh, keep in mind, I will not be taking any more orders after that as I have moved on to other projects. But of course, you're more than welcome to enjoy this video years down the road because it should be pretty interesting for most of you. And because some of the plants have actually gotten huge or they're climbing up a moth pole, we may have to chop it up and do a part two video in August where we can retail them. But everything in my nursery has to go because we have no plans to continue on with the plant store. For some plants that are impossible to ship, like your ferns and begonias, we do have some local markets here in Indonesia. So if you live in Indonesia, stay tuned for those. Disclaimer, some of the plants that you see in this episode is may not be in the best condition. And as I shared with you over the last few months, I have been struggling with plant care here due to very limited space and conditions where it's raining torrentially every day and not, I did not have the option of providing shade from the rain and everything was a little bit cramped but generally speaking, they're healthy but they're not in the condition where I am the most proud of. Please do DM me on at onlyplants.store on Instagram for any of the inquiries. Uh, I do not have a WhatsApp for you and I do not have a Facebook group and I will not respond to comments on, on this YouTube video. So please contact me on onlyplants.store and not my regular botanist account because that is for my educational purposes only. And all the inventory will be updated on the Google link in the video description below. So feel free to look at the video description. There's gonna be a, a, a link there that you can click on. It's gonna have a live update on the stocks. So if something's sold out, it's, it's gonna be marked as sold out over there. So it will save us a lot of time if you can actually make your way there to look at the stocks before reaching out to me and to inquire about the stocks. And I wanna make something clear for you guys. I am not closing down the YouTube channel. A lot of you guys are disappointed or they have said farewell in my last video where I mentioned I was closing down the store. The store is a small part of my channel and I, now that the store is closed down, I have way more time to be caring for plants and sharing my experiences with you um, here on YouTube. Stay tuned and I'm not going anywhere. Do not feel sad, do not feel the despair. But there is a future project that I'm working on that's going to be enabling a lot of the local growers. I'm going to work, be working closely with the local growers and the retail market to try to kind of lead the market in the right direction because we are currently going through a slum and there's a lot of chaos in the market. So wish me luck on that and I'll share more information once I can but as of now my hands are tied. I'm still in the business proposal part of the progress but stay tuned for that it's going to be very exciting and it's going to be more in line with my mission with this channel as well now for local orders feel free to DM me and I can create a Tokopedia link for a transaction this is for our own security and also for ease of shipment but again dear Indonesians no nego no negotiations oh my goodness that is the worst habit of Indonesia you know once somebody posted a price posted a plan they're gonna try to negotiate because that is such a waste of time for everybody. So if you're a seller, stop doing that. If you're a buyer, yeah, that is just not a sustainable way to do business for a, a plan market. We have to standardize our prices and we have to just save everybody's time. So everything marked in this video will be the final price. And for those of you watching overseas, the price for local and exports is exactly the same. As you know, a lot of the plan exports are actually marked up really high if it's going for exports. And I'm gonna explain later on why I am going to be 
selling them at local prices. Now, for overseas orders, please pay attention here. There's a lot, a lot to cover. If you have your own exporter or forwarder, that would be great. I will be able to work with those. So all I need to do is charge you a shipping fee of my plants from my nursery to their exporting facility. So that will be out of the way. But for most of you, I understand that you may not have an existing export solution. In that case, we are actually working with Titik Hijau. Titik Hijau is actually a nursery, but they're also a huge export business. And they also enable a lot of local growers to export. They have an export service for many people. So if you're looking to export plants from Indonesia, whether it's from my current sales, or from any nurseries, you can actually go through Titik Hijau. If you go to his Instagram, which is going to be on the screen, on the bio, on the bio section, there will be a link tree link. So you click on that and there's going to be their shop. And then there's going to be a link to request, uh, like a form to request for exports. Um, so feel free to do that in case you want to engage in their services. Now, in, for our purposes, Titik Hijau has given us a very, very, very good deal. So the cost of processing per shipment from this uh, from this event is 40 US dollars. And that includes all paperwork and phytosanitary required for export. There will also be an additional one US dollar handling fee per plant. And this covers the sphagnum moss packaging and handling. Now for US orders, there's a maximum of 12 plants per phytosanitary certification. For the Europe market, there is no maximum. What you need to do is when you order for plant from me, I will give you a quotation of the shipping cost uh, depending on where you are and then also the cost of processing which is the 40 US dollars so that's all that you need to be accounted for in terms of shipping and process now I would really appreciate it if you could support Titi Kijau because of the, their initiative to help me out in this event their shop is called Alchemy Shop and I'm gonna include the link on the screen uh, you can actually shop from their uh, plant shop as well and any orders that you purchase from me can be combined with theirs with no further processing uh, fee. So this is a really good way for you to shop for more plants and from two different places and get good value on the shipping cost. And to quote for the shipping cost, I'm going to be needing four information. That is your full name, your address, your phone and email. And this has to be very, very accurate because this is going to be used to process your order as well. And this is going to be first come first serve basis. We will hold a plant for you for only 24 hours if no payment is made with by then, the plan is going to be back into the stock and I accept only payment by PayPal, but this is going to be PayPal personal. I'm not going to do a PayPal business. And the second option is to do bank transfer to a local bank account here in Indonesia. After the payments are received, the export permits and phytosanitary actually takes about two to three weeks to process. After the two to three weeks, all the paperwork are done. The Hijau will export the plants. Before that, they will actually video the routes. They will video the packing process and then they will email you with the um, shipping information and we're actually only working with DHL at this time but if you have other shipping requests let me know but this is to ensure that the plants are in good conditions when they're shipped out to you and here's why I'm selling plants to you at a local price it's going to be very very low for the export market and this is because I'm going to be providing no after sales service as I mentioned earlier the plants will be videoed before they ship and everything after the box is closed I'm not going to be responsible. Again, this is a plant purge event. I'm going to be letting go of everything. I cannot replace anything and I do not want to be responsible for any rehabilitation or any mishaps that happen during shipping. That risk is completely been offset to you. And just to summarize, there will be no warranty, no guarantee, no refunds and no exchanges. In exchange, you get a very good deal. You get the same price that we're paying here locally in Indonesia. I'm not marking things up for the export. And I want to add that I want to impose a 100 US dollar minimum shopping for me to process your order because I cannot handle small orders at this time they're just taking too much time and I want to handle as little people as possible so I hope that you can uh, understand that so hopefully that's not a big inconvenience for you guys with that being said I believe this is everything that I need to mention uh, if you have any more questions or if you want to proceed with the order feel free to DM on my Instagram that's gonna be on the screen at onlyplants.store Again, this is not the same account that I use on my YouTube channel for my educational purpose, which is at Botanist. Feel free to add both accounts, follow both accounts if you wanted to see the, the retail side, but also the educational side of, the, of this channel. And yeah, I guess I'm just gonna get started with the plant shopping experience. This is an Anthurium viterifolium. It's actually 
I would say a medium size and it's actually very easy to care for. It's an epiphytic anthurium and it doesn't want to hang down. So this is what it looks like now. Uh, you may lose a few leaves when you ship them. They do get bent uh, easily when you're packing or when you're unpacking, but they re actually, uh, it's a very fast grower and they can recover very quickly. And they do recover very well in sphagnum moss, but give it a chunky arid mix like this if you can. This is another Anthurium viterifolium. It's actually quite big. I can't get all of them in frame. Um, and they grow like that, very epiphytically. Look at all these roots. Oh, and I managed to find one more. This one's actually the largest one of them all. How beautiful. Look at the, the tie, uh, necktie-like shape on the leaves with a single stripe down the middle. The reptile-like leaves. Gorgeous. And this is what their roots look like on the inside. Oh my god, they have really fat roots. This is going to suggest that they don't like to be sitting in water when you have fat roots like this. Over here, we have the Anthurium polyschistum. Polyschistum? I don't know how to pronounce it well. But it's cute, it's got this cannabis type vibes and they actually climb up. As you can see here, they will continue to grow upward. They require something to climb on. But if you keep propagating this, it can become a really bushy, like a fireworks looking plant. And we have many of these in stock. Again, some of them are larger, so we're gonna ship them by first come, first serve basis. Feel free to check the sh Google Sheets to see how much stock I have left of these. But they're an absolute easy anthurium to grow and one that I actually really catches my eye every time I walk by into the garden. I like to check in on them. And if you let them continuously climb up a wall, they look really, really beautiful. They just, they just take over. Um, but again, they actually look really, really nice if you put them in a terracotta and you let them get bushy. You can have many plants in one pot. They're also very easy to propagate. As you can see here, you just propagate them by single notes uh, and, and fast growing as well. And again, here we've got a lot of Anthurium polyshakestum. There's a lot of them in stock, easy to grow. And this is how they like to grow. Just look at that. It's climbing up and up and it's winning. It's, if I don't chop that up, it's gonna go to the roof at some point. There's some Anthurium VHEI hybrid. This is not pure VHEI, although it was sold to me as one. But this is quite uh, common in the Indonesian market. They can get huge. These are all the propagate. So I have two pots of these. This one is a little bit more established. And then this one is a little bit smaller. And they will get pretty big leaves, but they, they have a little bit of the VHEI vibe, but they're not as uh, ribbed. The six pack is not as obvious, but this is actually a lot easier to care for than the Vechia and I can't remember the flower. They do flower, but I can't remember what they look like. Over here we have an Anthurium Veroquianum. This is a pretty small one. It's got this new leaf and maybe, nope, none along the way, but it's got really really nice roots in there. This is from our propagation, so a video will be coming soon on this plant. This is another one. This is slightly bigger. This is number two. And let me show you number three. Slightly bigger leaf. This is just fungicide, by the way. I spray them down so they don't get any fungal attacks. And the last one, I don't know if I should let this go. No, I'm gonna keep this on my for myself. Yeah. How cute is that? This tiny little Warraquinum. Here we have an Anthurium villanarum. This is a narrow form one. The regular one looks like this. It's got round leaf. Rounder leaves, not round, but it's a little bit crinkled. But this is nice and pristine, which is why this is going for sale. This is actually from Aquagenera, and I rehabbed it. Took a while to get it back to normal. So this is the new leaf, and it will expand in size and harden over time. Here is an Anthurium villanarum, and I'm actually letting this go. I got this from Aquagenera, but it's rehabbed really well. Look at that root, and it's even put out the root from down below. It's doing really well. But the leaves were a little bit messed up in shipping and it hasn't really, let me see, it's not put out a new leaf yet, but there's one coming along the way. But this is a very easy plant to care for and this is beautiful form. But I bought a few of these and I'm only going to keep one. So this one is going. And here we have the Anthurium radicans hybrid. This is known, probably the radicans ex luxuriens. So they come in many, many different sizes, but this is actually one plant. But they come in different sizes. The faster you order, the bigger specimen I will choose for you. Anthurium chrysolinum. This is also behind my plant studio where I normally film. To look at the new leaves that come out. It's put on multiple leaves at the same time. 
Look at how robust this is. It's actually a mother plant because there are many vines coming out of this. This is actually getting low light, so it's not growing as fast as before, but if you purchase this, you know, put it in higher light and it'll grow like crazy for you because this is so many growth buds here. And this will do well in a box, especially because it's used to being in a low light. So it can be in a box for a few days. And then when you receive this, make sure that you don't give it high light immediately. Just slowly acclimatize it to higher and higher light. This is an Anthurium baluanum and it's still a baby. They can get massive. They can get huge. And the leaf actually looks like this shape when it's larger. And it's beautiful when they put out a new leaf because it's like reddish and then it will fade into this. This is an Anthurium magnificum and I'm letting this go. Pardon the other leaves, this is actually grown in low light. So the, uh, it's, it's grown under like other plants. So some of the leaves are actually yellowing up and it didn't get as big as the other ones that were growing in higher light. But as you can see, there's actually a lot of root system in there. It's really, really well rooted. So I'm going to take off a lot of the yellowing leaves. I should have done that before the video, but I didn't have time. This one's have to go too. So it'll be shipped with only two to three leaves. But it's going to do well. It's going to just keep growing. There's a new growth point there. Growing up and up. And uh, again, if you have the space for it, because these guys can get enormously huge. Now, this is one that is grown in higher light. I do have a video on this, so feel free to look that up on my channel. Uh, this is a bit of fungicide here because I spray this down, but this is how big the leaf is. And it's put out two leaves at the same time. So this is one pot. If I'm not wrong, this might be the mother pot. Oh god, I, I poked my eye into this pandan leaf. Oh my gosh. Oh, whew. All right, so keep on going because the show must go on. And yeah, there are many, many leaves here, so I cannot check on how the pot looks like now, but it's doing really, really well in, in here. And yeah, this one I'm letting go because I don't have the space for it in my new place. And this is what the new leaf look like. It's so adorable here. Here's an Anthurium clarinervium. It's actually a teenager size and this is going... There you go, this is the back. And there's another one back here, a smaller one. Gonna be the same price and I'm gonna take it out of his face. But this new leaf is coming along the way and look at the roots here. Here is the Philodendron Veracusum. This is actually a small size, their leaves can get huge. We do have a video on this on how to propagate and care for it. And this is actually taken from that mother plant. This is already the third or fourth generation. But yeah, they can also get big and they do need to climb. And they can also be propagated by wet sticks if you take single notes here. This is from our video, from our Veracusum video. No spider mites, thank God, okay. These are very, very spider mites prone. So I'm always spraying these down and I'm always worried about them. But yeah, this is still a very, very small size. They don't really ship well, so there's a bit of a risk there, but buyer beware. They don't, they're not the easiest to ship, but then they're very, very inexpensive. They're actually fast grower and you can propagate them just by wet stick. Even if you lose the leaves, you can still propagate them by just a node. Next up, we have the Philodendron Tortums. I actually have many, many sizes here, so I'm gonna go through them and they're gonna be very, very differently priced. I'll start with this one here. So if you're, Exporting it, it's gonna be taken off the moss. Look at a cute little leaf. It's actually very easy to damage them too, actually, so I have to be very, very careful with this one. But this is a larger one. And then this next one is this one right here. This is also a pretty good size. It's a lot of leaves. And then this is a bit smaller. Oops, broke the pot. This is a little bit smaller. They're easy to cover. They're so beautiful, gorgeous plants. And then we also have smaller size ones like this one. It's just putting out a new vine here. How cute. Here is a baby Philodendron tortum. That's the leaf that we propagated with. And this is the baby and it's put out a new one. So I will not ship at this condition, of course, but it'll have to wait until this unfurls in the next one to two weeks time. This is actually a mother plant. We did cut it up and it's put out a new vine already. And then this is the new leaf from the new vine. So there may be multiple branches here, but mother plants, they grow really, really fast. So, and they may put out different vines. Next up, we have the Philodendron Paraiso Verde. There's actually quite a lot of them here, but let's start with this mother plant. We are actually letting go of the mother plant. Look at all the cuts that we've made. And now it's giving me two vines. So there's actually two vines in this plant, and this is what they look like. 
the price is gonna be on the screen for you and I'm gonna slowly go down and they're gonna be smaller and smaller in size the second one here look at the beautiful marking on these and it's already very established these guys are very very easy this is one of the easiest philodendrons but you do need to give them heat and warm um, heat and light to bring out the variegation if you put them in somewhere cool somewhere with lower light the variegation is gonna not show up as much uh, if you got a green specimen do not worry about it if you got like a low variegation they can go into this they can turn into this if you give it proper light and warmth basically uh, so that is the this is the third one let me show you the stem here and this is very very uh, easy as I mentioned they, their roots don't really rot as much as the other philodendrons uh, they're very very forgiving uh, to overwatering because I've never really killed any of these. I can't remember killing a Paris of Verde. This is a fourth one. That's what they look at all these roots down here. And then this is the fifth one. This is a sixth. Look at the leaf. The leaves can look very different. It can look varying from one pl uh, plant to another, from even from one leaf to an another. This one looks a little bit more like a dragon's head. And then this one here, it's a recent propagate, but look at the newest leaf. Look at that. Yeah, this is doing really, really, really well. So I remember at some point they were kept in lower light and they got gave me a lot of green foliage, but I moved them and then now they've given me really, really nice, bright, variegations this is the next one and they're also quite pest free although they can put out these uh, spots i don't have any of them here uh, but then you can pull out extra floral nectaries that invite the ants to protect it this is the next one and then here's the next one And then we're, we're coming to the discount aisle here probably. This one hasn't put out a new leaf yet, but it's on the way. So it's a mystery one. And I would actually wait maybe a few weeks before I ship this. So by the time this gets to you, I think the leaf would have hardened up and emerged. This is a low variegation one. This is probably going to be very cheap. But again, keep in mind, this can easily turn into highly variegated ones if you have the right conditions. If you don't have any bright area, you don't have a greenhouse, you don't have supplementary artificial light, I would skip this plant entirely. These guys are not known for its dull leaf. Uh, you really need to give them the right conditions to bring out these model leaves. And all of these actually came from one plant, so they have the same exact gene genetics. Over here, we've got some phil philodendron looping them here with the underside the very cute underside we've got many many sizes of these but they're going to be sold at the same price some of them are even so long that it's grown up the shelf and through here so again first come first serve basis if you reach out to me early you'll get the bigger one you get the more mature one and if you reach out to me a bit late maybe you'll get something this small but it's still a very very good size to ship and to have and they're very easy to propagate and feel free to google up what their mature form looks like their mature form leaves look completely different from their juvenile leaf all right so next up we have the philodendron florida ghost there's quite a lot of them here so i'm going to only categorize them into two one is a larger one this is considered a larger specimen and please do give this a moss pole they are climbers and the leaves can get huge if you let them climb as you can see here they are really trying to climb look at all these happy ants here so the ants here are brought about by the extra floral nectaries let me find one if i can something's on the stem so it actually uh, attracts the ants by secreting sugar and the ants in return protects the plant from any pests so it's actually very very good to have ants on these philodendrons this is another one. So first come, first serve. If you order early, you get the larger one. And then next up, we have the smaller one. So again, there are many, many varying sizes. This is probably the larger one of them specimens. And then we've got some as small as this. They're going to be the same price. If you order last, you're going to be getting this tiny little one here, which is fine. They actually grow really, really fast, you guys. So there you go. This is the Philodendron by Panifolium, or known as the Golden Violin. The new leaves come out creamy yellow like this and then they turn green. And they do have this cute 
they call it violin, but I think it's more like a dragon's head. So this is a larger specimen. I would have two pots of these. And look at that, they're just ready to take off. Look at all these roots. And then there are these smaller ones. So this one's a little bit big, but I'm considering in the smaller category. If you reach out first, you'll get this one first. Um, and look at how cute the little babies are. So there's three of the smaller ones here. And back here, look at all these, these are melanochrysums. So there's a lot of baby ones. These are all still pretty small. I'm going to be selling them at the same price, by the way. This is going to be considered a pretty small, but then they can go as big as that. Look, at, if you go, if you look at this, look at that, it's huge. And I'm not going to differentiate the price again. If you order first, you'll get the bigger ones. If you order last, you will get the smaller ones. Will you look at this? This is actually the philodendron micans. How beautiful is that? This is just so gorgeous. Right, it's just climbing up the wall. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to be able to sell these. It's just so happy here. I don't have the heart to take it down. But this is probably very available in your area. So feel free to look these up in your area. It's going to be very difficult for me to ship because they're not expensive at all. Maybe locally I can sell them as a full pot because we are growing them full pot like this. There is a philodendron elegance here. This is actually the parent plant. We made a cut here at some point. Uh, so you can call this a mother plant somewhat. Uh, this is actually still pretty medium-sized leaf. This is not huge at all, but they can get huge and palm-like. Oops, sorry, monstera in the way. So this is for sale and the pot goes all the way down there. And we also have the smaller size. This is a, a lot smaller than that, but they're easy to grow, but they're not fast. The uh, philodendron elegans, they're not popular for some reason. Again, the mature leaves look very different from these, so feel free to Google up what the mature leaves look like. So this is the Philodendron Cream Splash. It's sold as a misnomer, as a Gabby, but this is definitely not the Gabby here. Look at how beautiful the cream is. They respond really well to light. Look at how beautiful the new growths are. They look like the Brazil, but with an extra bit of cream, a white stripe on it and you need to give it a lot of light. Not to the point of burning, a bit of direct sunlight in the morning and then it will reward you with more and more cream. And if yours revert to more green, you can propagate from an older vine to encourage more of this cream. But they look really, really nice. Look at how this beautiful, this big pots of them are. We have a lot in stock, but if you are ordering them for export, this is what uh, the typical size is. You might get something a little bit bigger than this, maybe a bit smaller. This is just one that I, grab in my hand but this is one vine and for those of you living in indonesia you can actually order full pots of these uh, they are very ready here this is the philodendron brantianum and we've actually got huge ones of these uh, huge as in like there are already many vines in them they actually hate to be moved so if you get these they may take a while to acclimatize uh, you may have a few new leaves that fail to unfurl but if you give them proper care they will recover or if you're smart you can take single node cuttings and just propagate single node in water. They do really well in water and they rehab really well in water. We have a lot of these. We have like six or seven of these that are already around this size. And if you have all the time in the world, you can actually propagate the Baron Brantiana, putting many, many vines in one pot and then letting them climb like this. They actually look really, really beautiful as a full bushy totem pole, like a little shrub of them. Their silver leaves are just insane. And they, they can get huge, by the way. Their leaves can get the size of your face if you let them climb up. And over here, we've got a massive Brantianum. I'm not even going to count the leaves, but as you can see, the leaves are actually huge on these guys. And it's climbing up, up and over. So this is a really long vine that I'm going to let go. I have a lot of smaller ones, but this one particularly has huge, huge leaves. And you know what happens if you propagate these? Because the stem is thick, if you get this and you propagate them, you'll more like you're more than likely to get big leaves as well. Look at how beautifully silver this is. This is the philodendron mummy, and this is just one of them. I've got a few options for you guys, but look at how beautiful the frills are on these. They're very easy to grow, very forgiving, and very very fast growing, and very easy to propagate as well. And beautiful silver leaves. I need to stop propagating mine because this can get huge and I haven't been able to enjoy their big, huge forms. The new leaf coming along the way. I don't advise a ship at this stage. I would actually probably hold off the shipment until this new leaf unfurl, if possible, of course, because they don't do so well in transition. Putting out a new leaf, gorgeous 
back. I can't get enough of these guys. They're just so easy to grow, easy to propagate, and such beauties. Here is another mame. That's a bigger one. It's already put out a vine. Actually, this is ready to be propagated some more. They're, that's how fast they actually grow. But look at how beautiful they are in a clump like this. This is actually just one plant, but it's naturally you know, sticking out of the shelf, trying to get as much light as it can. And look at the frills in the back. This, are, this is still a baby one. I've got a lot more to show you later on. But very easy, very fast growing philodendron to care for. Beautiful silver too on the leaves. Next up, we have the philodendron Araba Ponce. We've got some larger ones. This is uh, probably a mother plant. We're letting pretty much all of them go. It's known for its beautiful un maroon underside. Look at the new leaf, it's unfurling. And look at all, all these extra floral nectaries. I actually love to stare at them. They invite the ants to come and protect the plant. But we also have them as, uh, in a smaller size, in this size. We've got some philodendron 69686, or known as the philodendron coat. This one, we forgot to give it a pull, so it's kind of leaning downwards. But this is actually quite small. And I've got another one here that is climbing up a pole. Look at that, the new legs hasn't opened up yet. And this is what they look like when they're juvenile, with their juvenile leaves. But then they become this when they get older. So we've got two here. That I'm going to be selling them at the same price. And then there should be one more over here. This is another one. So yeah, they're none, none, of, none of them are mature yet, but they are very fast grower and reliable growers. Here we've got some Philodendron Gloriosum. This is actually the size of my palm or a little bit bigger than my palm. And then we've got the smaller ones here. They're actually very, very fast growing and very easy in my experience. Uh, they are spider mites prone. So, and they're also very prone to fungal infections on the leaves, but their new leaves grow so fast that they quickly replace the sick older leaves. They can get huge. This one is actually a symptom of spider mites. If you see like this kind of little dots on the leaf, but I don't see them here. We may have cleared the spider mites infestation because I do check on these quite often. Yeah, uh, they're gonna be sold at the same price because they're such fast growers. So if you order first, you'll get this big one probably. Here are some more philodendron gloriosums and there are quite a few of them here. Again, I won't be able to photograph for you one by one when you buy them. I'll just pick them at random. I'll buy. I'll start picking the larger one first for the first orders. This beauty here, this is the philodendron mexicanum. This is actually a common philodendron, at least here in Indonesia. And it's beautiful. Look at the red underside. It's a little bit different from Adaba Ponce in that it's got these very triangular shaped leaves. And it's very, very easy to grow. If you give the morning direct or a bit of direct light, their new leaves are pink or reddish in color, but they do fade to this green. This is a philodendron Jose Buono, and this is the leaf that we propagated it with. And the more light you give it, the more variegation it's going to get. Uh, this is also pretty stable. It's got a beautiful Thai constellation-like splash on the leaves. Uh, just overall an easy plant to care for. It actually is very forgiving with watering and also light levels. Here we've got another philodendron Jose Buono. Look at the beautiful new leaf here. And this is what the main stem looks like. Here is a, another philodendron Jose Buono. It's slowly starting to climb up the pole, but they can get massive if you let them climb. This one has beautiful variegation throughout. Here's a philodendron Burla Marx Fantasy. That new leaf is coming in strong. The leaf that we propagated with is a little bit distraught here, but I'm gonna keep it here because it's still providing food for this plant here. This leaf is so tiny. I guess this was the, the first leaf that came out during propagation, perhaps. This is why it got small suddenly. But yeah, it's returning to a normal size. So this is one, and we've got another one here. Looking beautiful. This one's a little bit bigger. If you look back, sorry. Too many things in the background. This is many leaves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, including the one that was propagated. The higher they climb, the better it's attached to the pole, the moss pole, the bigger the leaf is going to be. Over here we have a baby philodendron fibricata phylum. Gorgeous. Feel free to Google up what the mature leaves look like. It's a beautiful shape and form, but I have not able to get the mature leaf yet. 
because you do need to let them climb and you need to uh, watch out for them. And here's another one. Pardon that old leaf is turning yellow, but this one is for sale. It's about four leaves. And yeah, if you let them keep climbing up, it's gonna provide those big uh, tri-lobed leaves. But you probably have to fertilize and also spray down the pole often because I noticed that just leaving them alone does not help as much. And this here, sorry about this leaf. This is an old leaf that we propagated it with. And this is the new leaf that's come out and a new one is coming along the way. Maybe that's two. Is that two leaves? Sometimes they do that. So this is the Plauminii narrow form. It's supposed to be the, uh, well, I don't want to say the word black face, but I'm forced to, but it's a dark form for this plant. And I found that if you want to keep it dark, you got to give it pretty low light. Here's another Plauminii narrow. Sorry, it's been tied to the, the, the pole, sorry. Uh, but yeah, it's a little bit more mature, slightly bigger in size. It's bigger than my palm and the new leaf is looking beautiful. It's coming in hot. Another Philodendron Plaumanii narrow form. The new leaf is leaning over here. Beautiful glossy leaf that will harden over time. Look at their backs, beautiful backs. Here is a Plaumanii narrow. There's so many of them, I keep propagating them with a new leaf trying to come out from here. But this is a baby one, so this is going to be a little bit cheaper, I guess. This is a Philodendron Plaumanii narrow, and it's put out double leaves. This is twin leaves. I have posted this on my Instagram a few a few weeks ago. It was just unfurling at the time, but look at it. It's put, it put out exactly two leaves, like conjoined twins. How freaky is that? And this is also easy to grow. And this is the narrow form, as I mentioned earlier. This is a Plaumanii regular. This is the round form leaves. And there's a new leaf coming along the way. This is not looking very good. It's got rained on every day, but I guess, yeah, you just have to deal with it and rely on the new leaves to look good. And when you get this, sometimes they may fail to unfurl or the new leaf might get a little bit busted looking, but they do get better over time. If you give them really good conditions, consistent care, their leaves can be pristine and perfect because that's what I had them grown as before. But it's just unfortunate I had to chuck them out here in the rain and it's just gonna have to fend for its own. There's more of them here. And this one's put out a new leaf over here. Sorry, this is the new leaf that's put out. That one's actually from another pot over. So I've got two pots of these that are round leaf. This is the old leaf we propagated with. Yeah, it's been tied to this pole for a long time, but it's hanging in there. And some of the larger leaves are around the back here. There you go. So this is from one from each pot. So this is a larger specimen. And this is another one. This is uh, one that's behind it. It's like the size of my palm, slightly bigger than the one in the front. But this is the leaf that we've, uh, one of the older leaves. And this is very normal for them to be that way. But I'm leaving it on because it's still helping with the photosynthesis process. This is a baby Plaumanii. This is the regular form. It's got three leaves. The older leaves turn yellow and falling off, but the new leaf looks fine. And it's living in a beautiful terracotta pot. It gets watered every day. Got a philodendron pink princess with low variegation. So this is going to be pretty cheap. So this is one of them. And there's actually another one with slightly better variegation, but also very, very cheap. It's got a little bit of cream here, a little bit over there. And the one of the later leaves looks like this. The newest leaf unfortunately only has a little dot, but let me show you the patio, the main stem. Yeah, there's only a little bit of stripe going down the main stem. So this is a very low variegated pink princess. It's actually beautiful even on its own. And there are lots of these uh, philodendron silver sword, the philodendron has stadum. Uh, they come in very different sizes. Some of them are this teeny tiny, but some of them are huge. Oh, well, not huge. They're a little bit larger. They're propagated at the same time, but they're really fast grower and they're very easy to care for and they're very, very affordable right now. Philodendron Sharonii. Got a lot of them here. This is just one. This is a small one. It's They're not the fastest growing, but they can get big if you give them time, if you give them something to climb on. This next one here, the Sharonii, is a lot bigger. Uh, I would... Oh, whoa, 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 This is what happens when you're filming with one hand. Okay, all right, nice catch, Sean. Very nice catch. Oh, uh, okay. This is turning into disaster. Lean back, lean back. Okay, so the, 
the leaf here is actually really long so this is a little bit more mature and then the third one that we've got here is a juvenile form of them and one more here it's actually healthy with a new leaf but this is the older leaf so yeah they are actually very very easy to propagate easy to grow and this is from my video so if you want to see what the mother plant looks like check out that Sharon Yai video and we've got a juvenile here if you got a tight budget <laughs> there are some baby philodendron Sharon Yai's down here it's really really well established and there's another pot back there and another so there's three of them uh, so they all came from that same parent plant and they will all grow up to be the same shape and form but this is the baby ones and this is a very good size to ship and they're quite reliable growers uh, it'll take about a year maybe to get to that a medium size the size of your head and maybe another year to get really really enormous if you don't propagate it as often as i do some philodendron white knights this is one this is actually a mother plant we did cut it up for a video and i don't remember where to make it sorry this is not a mother plant this is actually just a plant on its own but it's beautiful beautiful stem but it, I, the reason why i'm saying that it's a mother plant is because it's laying amongst other mother plants we have a video on these coming up soon that's where we made the cut and there we go that's a new leaf look at this cute little baby leaf so yeah look at the beautiful stem here so this is number two we've got a lot of these to show you so bear with me and here is another mother plant we make the cut here Sometimes they will set out multiple vines from below, but this one hasn't yet. This one has a low variegation. But look at how beautiful this is. And this next one has gorgeous variegation. This is also a mother plant. If you look at this cut here, it's been cut here and cut here. That means it's got a few nodes down below where it could possibly branch out. And look at that variegation. This is beautiful. Look at that main stem too, with the whites and the reds. There are quite a lot of them here. This is the first one. Look at the new leaf that's come out. So the variegation is not crazy high, but they're very, very stable, but it's irregular. Some leaves have higher variegation than others. This is another one. This will be in our video. We'll have a propagation video on this coming up soon, but the price of each is gonna be on the screen. And of course the, the price is gonna depend heavily on the level of variegation here. Sorry about the dirt on the leaves. It's coming up from the succulents up above. But there you go. And then this one over here this is low variegation this is going for a low price and then there's one sitting in here look at that first leaf it's beautiful but yeah there you go so any moment now the leaf could put out a very white leaf and if you want to get very variegated ones you can a, either buy one that's already variegated or you can just keep propagating them they're very easy to propagate and hope that you can get more variegation out of them this is one as well as you can see the leaf that we propagated is that one but the newer leaf is not as variegated but you never know any one of those new leaves could be very variegated and then there's more Hang on. let me try to get to it here's another one this one was in a propagation bin so it's put out aerial roots but that's what the leaves look like so the white knights are known for this red petiole and red stem and last but not least this one over here this one has very little variegation so this is and it's also very young so it grew actually out of a wet stick as you can see here it was just a stump so you can actually propagate these just by uh, from a wet stick propagation and there's some variegation here but again with my experience with these sometimes the variegation just comes randomly later on on one of the leaves so if you're looking for something cheap and if you don't mind something more green this is one for you this is a philodendron mcdowell this is a baby actually this is one of the leaves that came out the leaf that we propagated with is already turned yellow it's a bit of bacteria here but, but it's not touching any other leaves so i'm going to leave it on for now but the new leaf is fine and another one should be along the way somewhere the, the back of the patio will pull out another leaf but this one is still hardening but it'll be ready to ship in a few weeks this is another one and they're about the same size so they're going to be around the same price and this one is uh, this is the leaf that we propagated with and this is a first leaf that it came out and another one is coming along the way and just to show you the roots this is what the roots look like here is another mcdowell this one's a little bit bigger it's a little bit more established the leaf looks like this there are four leaves currently with one coming along the way gorgeous plant actually this can get huge they can get huge and pillow like 
and this is a slightly bigger one this is the biggest leaf and this is the newest leaf that is put out and that is the base over there it's put out putting out a new leaf i believe that little red dot there this is a philodendron strawberry shake it's very nice variegation is growing steadily back here on my behind my plant studio this is what the stem looks like and pardon the sheath, let me take that off. There you go. It's got some beautiful aerial roots already. So ready to be propagated. They're easy to propagate, these guys. All right, so down here we've got a philodendron subhastatum. And it's got beautiful red color underside on these. Very fast growing, very easy to care for, and very easy to propagate. Uh, there's a larger one back there with more leaves. But I'm going to be letting two of these go, one with the larger and one with the smaller, and they're going to be the same exact price. So first come, first serve. Now this is actually my favorite philodendron of all time. Again, forgive the fungicide on here, but it's normally all green. I just sprayed it down yesterday, and this is beautiful, and it's very, very affordable. This philodendron is going to be very hard to pack though. This is the philodendron linnat, and uh, it grows really easily, really fast grower. I got this as a younger plant, it just keeps growing and growing and it's got this beautiful I don't know how do you call it it's like a reptile like uh, leaves here and then we've got these are the roots are all over the place this is the philodendron martianum it's got known as a fat boy philodendron and it should take this off Hang on, this is not very sightly at all sorry about that uh, but yeah it looks like this we propagated it from a clump and it's a, it can get huge by the way this can get enormous it's known for its cute little fat uh, petiole here A few Hoya Callistophylla here. I would say there's three or four that are uh, available. These ones, I'm not gonna sell them, the ones that are not I'll put out vines. But yeah, and I'm gonna mention this more than once, but any uh, plant with multiples, I'm going to uh, send the biggest one first. So if you inquire with me first, you'll get the biggest and most beautiful specimen. For those of you who are late, you'll get the last specimen unfortunately it's first come first serve basis but yeah this is an easy to care for and this is actually very very slow growing this is a year old to get to this size and here we have some Hoya Dolly Cosparde here let me see if I can get and these leaves are a little bit wet but if you see the veins here it's beautiful so we've got a few pots of these I'm probably only gonna let go three of them because I still want to keep some for myself but yeah this is a a very very slow growing Hoya. This has been here for about six months, seven months, and it's only put out this little vine here. This is a Hoya Pubicalyx. Let me check to make sure. Pubicalyx Royal Hawaiian Purple. I'm guessing that's. Oh, I just keep dropping things. So this will. There's three vines in here, but I'm going to be selling them as a single vine because you can't really ship a full pot like this. They're going to consider these three different plants. So. Yeah, this is, uh, I guess this is known for its purple flowers, if I'm not wrong. Here we have the Hoya Heshkaliana variegata. There's actually three, three pots of them here, and they're known for its beautiful variegation. They're not the easiest to care for. They actually, uh, here in my climate, they actually hate overwatering, but they can also underwater very easily, but it is a beautifully variegated one. And then we have the Hoya Wayedii variegated. So this will be shipped as the established plant. Uh, that has roots with a few leaves because they're all different ones so this is one plant this is two one more plant so these are a few plants in one pot but again we cannot ship a full pot in exports so it's going to be separated into single plants and there's going to be a few leaves for you We've got the hoya caudata here this one has put out a vine so this is how i will ship them there'll be two to three leaves at least this is another one that's put out a new vine from these two cuttings here from this, I mean one cutting with two leaves. So I'm going to be selling them at this size, but they're beautiful for silver, uh, not silver, it's actually a little bit like a matte silver on the leaves, and they can sun stress to become beautiful red. Here we have a few Hoya MA07. This is what the baby leaves look like. There you go. And we've got two of these, the Hoya Shepardi eyes. They've got longer leaves and the Wayedii, and I can't tell them apart other than that. But here's the other one that we're letting go. This one's put out a vine already. And we've got some Hoya Macrophylla pot of gold here. I reckon there is, well, it's a new vine here. I'm gonna let go of maybe two, two plants. Maybe I have more, three. I'm gonna let go of three of these, so. Yeah, the first person will get the biggest one. This is the larger one, this is one vine. 
and then we also have something smaller like this. All right, I guess I'm letting go of this as well. This is the Hoya Carnosa Compacta. Look at this new leaf that it's putting out here. There are actually two plants in here, so I'm going to be letting go of both of them. Uh, both are small and they're very, very slow growing. So yeah, but this is, should handle shipping quite well, if I'm not wrong. But yeah, one of them smaller, they're going to be different size and different price because they grow like a leaf in every three months or so. They're so the slowest growing. So this small one is going to be, the price is going to be on the screen. And the larger one is going to be a little dif bit different for the pricing. Letting go of some Hoya Sunrise. I believe there are two different vines here. So I'm going to be separating them into two. But this is what one of the vines would look like. And this is how I would ship it. And the, the, I think both of them are about the same size. This is slightly smaller, shorter in length. But this is also available for you. Um, and if you give this a little bit of a higher light, they will give you more beautiful reds. Uh, this is a little bit red, but not really because I've been growing this under here, under the shelf. So it's not been getting the optimal light. These are Skindapsis argarius. And I have a few of these, but I'm not going to sell them in a big pot like this. They will come to you as a single strand. So this is what another mature leaf actually looks like. Some of them, these are all babies by the way, they are, look at how cute these are. So yeah, I'm going to be selling them as a vine, I'm going to ship you as a vine like this. So this is one single vine, there's going to be at least five to six leaves and then you're going to grow them out in your place because we cannot ship a full pot. Like some of these are actually multiple cuttings in one pot and that's not possible to ship internationally. And if, if you're local, this is also sold in our Tokopedia page or feel free to contact me if you want to buy this locally as a full pot. Next up, we have the Syndapsis Trubii Moonlight. These are small. So I'm going to be selling you the something like this if I export. This, will, this is just one vine with a few leaves. This is how you will get it. Uh, I cannot sell you this, the whole full pot. As you can see here, we're actually propagating full pots of these. But if you're living local in Indonesia, reach out to me if you wanted to get a full pot. It's going to cost a little bit more, but Look at all these cute little leaves. They're going to bush out really fast and really beautifully. They make really wonderful indoor table decorations once it's taken off. There are some Skindapsis Silver Splash here. They actually respond really well to light. The more light you give it, the more silver it'll get. And if you give it less light, it'll turn something like this. It was going to look a little bit like your Skindapsis Pick this exotica. This is the most common synapsis, and I'm not going to be exporting this. But if you live locally, you can uh, order these as full pot. We're growing full pots of these, but this one uh, will get silver like this. This is what you're known to be uh, as a silver splash. If you order this again, I'll be shipping only one vine, maybe like something like this. I can show you, but you can see this one vine coming out here with like four or five leaves. That's how you will get them. This is the synapsis silver lady. And there's three vines living in here, so I'm going to be separating them if I'm going to export them. And it's got thicker leaves, but it's beautiful. It's mostly silver and it's just a sturdier, thicker leaf, as I mentioned before. And they trail beautifully. Here we've got some Skindapsis Silvery Ann. Uh, I can't ship the whole pot, so it'll be just one single vine coming to you, but it'll have four to five leaves. So it's known for its random splashed silver on the leaves. So there's some of that here for you. The Skindapsis coriaceus variegated. They actually want to climb. These guys, unlike other Skindapsis that you can allow to trail, these have a very, very strong climbing habit. So you might want to give this a pole or a wall or a tree to climb on, but this is a variegated one. It's pretty easy to care for. And the variegation is a little bit like, uh, what do you call it? It's like a turmeric color. This one here is a slightly larger specimen. It's already got a few leaves on these and this is what the lower leaf look like. How cute. And yeah, it really wants to climb as you can see here. So if you put this against a wall or something, it will climb. All right, so these guys, this is the variegated Syngonium podophyllum variegatum. And again, this is two or three plants in a pot. If you're an exporting it, I'm only going to be able to send you one vine, that is one plant. So the price on the screen is going to be for one vine, but there's going to be a few leaves in there for you to enjoy and to rehab. And I'm going to be selecting some good variegated ones. But that plant is actually a very, very fast grower. And look at this, we're actually going to be having this in an event uh, in a week's time. Look at how beautiful they look in a pot. I actually jammed about four 
or five pots, small pots into this big pot and it just looks beautiful. They uh, require constant propagation because if not, they start to trail and vine very, very unceremoniously. Here we have some Schismatoglodus sp. Unfortunately, Schismatoglodus is not very well described and we don't know the species of these. But this is one that is really beautiful for a silver foliage. It's very fast growing and it readily puts out pups. As you can see here, it puts out pups from underneath. So the price is going to be for one plant like this. Again, first come, first serve. Um, the, if you contact me first, you get the larger specimen. But this is very easy to grow. I don't know how they ship though. They have really, really thin leaves. So I would be really a uh, bit concerned about how they ship uh, to you. But they are very easy to grow. Although I must say that they are very, very spider mites prone. So just be careful. You got to treat this guy very often. And again, they put up they will reward you with so many pups once it's healthy. Look at how beautiful the foliage is. So yeah, I hope that this ships well. I don't know if it will, but this is a very, very cheap plant. So it's actually quite affordable to get for its beauty. It's got a very, very good value. We've got a lot of the Raphidophora tetrasperma. They're actually a decent size. The pot goes all the way down here. So they're going to be the same price. We're going to sell them at the same price, but some of them are a bit smaller. The smaller ones are about this height. So there's about seven or eight leaves. Oh, I love this plant a lot. This is the Syngonium macrophylla frosted heart. Is that what it is? I can't remember very well. Look at how beautiful frosted this is. They respond well to light. You do need to give them light for them to put out these Frost. And I have a video on this, so do look it up on my channel. And this is what it looks like. It's just so beautiful. They do want something to climb on. But here we also have a smaller option, the baby one. Look at how cute this is. So this is going to be a little bit more affordable for you guys. Next up, we have the Monstera Edensonii Mint, or the locals call it the variegated local here. And I've got many, many specimens of these, hundreds of pots, but I'm going to categorize them by size and you won't be able to choose the variegation. I don't have the time to entertain to photograph each one for you to choose. So it'll be first come, first serve, and it's going to be random. But as a rule of thumb, the first person to order will get the bigger and the most variegated ones. And the last person will get the random. But this is the uh, consider the larger specimen ones, but this is the smaller one of that batch. We've got some of the larger variegated Edensonii back here. They're considered extra large actually, but we're going to sell them as a, at a, as a large size. It's going to be the same price as before. Moving on, we have the medium sized ones. These have like five to six leaves. Look at this one is unfurling. How cute is that? Um, and the, I have many, many, again, this is just a bit of them. There's a lot of them in stock. If you're a business to business, you want to order more, go ahead and order it. The prices are very good on these now. They're easy to care for, but they really, really need light to bring out the variegation. Once you put them in low light, they start to bring, to give you greener leaves. Um, these guys, their variegation is very, very stable, but they're very, very irregular. Finally, we have the small size of these. Some of them have very good variegation. Some of them do have lower variegation, but keep in mind, they all came from the same plant. They all came from one plant. So they have the same genetics, but you do need to care for them correctly. You need to give them good light and you need to propagate them often to bring out more variegation uh, through selective propagation. Look at how beautiful this one is. Here we have the Epipremnum Amplicimum Silver. If you look closely at the leaves, they have these silver stripes on them. The regular green form is easy to care for. The silver one is actually easy too, but I do notice that you do need to give them light for them to push out the silver striped leaves like this. The Amplicimum yellow variegated is very hot and trending now in the market, but this silver one, I haven't really seen much of it out in the market, but we have, I think about five or six of them in stock. They actually look really nice in a full bushy pot too. This is another one of them. This is their natural growth pattern. They grow like this, they're an epiphyte. If you let them climb, they will climb very beautifully. How nice is that? And I really, really just love the silver stripes on these. This is probably a better picture of the epipremnum uh, silver. And look at that beautiful silver here. And it does want to climb up a wall, but look at that. This is so beautiful. And they actually started out from the same parent plant. So this silver actually started to appear more and more on its own. It's getting very bright light. And that, yeah, the pot is actually all the way down here. They're prolific climbers, but if you plant them in a clump, they actually look really beautiful um, as a full bush of a, of a clump, if you know what I mean. But every time they put out a runner, you may have to cut it off 
and it'll start putting out new vines and make it more even more bushy. This is the Epipremnum Shangri-La. It's got this really fiery curly leaves. There's nothing wrong with them. They actually do curl up like this. We've got five of these and they are variegated. They kind of look like the Epipremnum uh, that is the Golden Pothos, but they're just a little bit crinkled. They're really, really funky looking, easy to care for. This camera's not zooming for some reason. Yeah, this is not for everybody. I don't know how I feel about this. I can't say this is my favorite, but of course this tickles some of your pickles. So yeah. Over here, we've got some Aglonema Pictum Tricolor. This is the larger one and it's Beautiful, look at the color on these. But the variegation is not as strong. You do need to give them more light to have those white beta splash. I actually have this in deep shade, but it's already putting out a baby here. This is actually a mother plant. So that's a very good deal. This is what happens when you give them a bit more light. This is better uh, stripes over here, better uh, white splash. This is the medium sized one. Let me pull it out. And look at the roots, how cute. And then we've got even the baby size ones. This is the juvenile here. And over here, actually, I can also let this go. This is the mother plant of the Aglanema Pictum tricolor. It's starting to flower already. I should actually cut that off. But it's got two vines living in one pot. It looks really beautiful from up above, actually. Next up, we have the Aglonema Donna Carmen. This is actually very common here. I don't think locals are going to buy these. But for those of you living abroad, this may not be as easily accessible to you. So I'm going to be giving this a chance with exporting to see if people will buy them. But there are a few pots of, here, of them here. I see five pots. Next, we have the Aglonema Rotundum. There's actually two types here. I believe this one's the one from Aceh. So this is actually two plants living in a pot, but I'm going to be shipping only one plant at a time. Look at how beautiful and dreamy this is. And this is uh, one of the parent plants uh, that Sir Greg Hambali uses a lot in his hybridization because of its beauty, because of the stripes here. And they're also very easy to grow, at least here in Indonesia. And then we also have these. I just did a quick Google and they're just known as the Aglonema Rotundum Pink Stripe. So that one is the Ace. And this one is the pink stripe, apparently. I have a feeling they're the same, but I could be wrong. So I've got one, two, three, four, and five of these uh, ones. And they're quite cute. They're very classic looking. Again, these, these guys are very easy to care for. They actually like to be in very bright, indirect light, and they hate water. They actually thrive with a bit of a drought period. You do want to let them dry out completely, but not for too long, actually. This is the Aglodimba Pictum Tricolor. It's crossed with the Rotundum, which has got this pink stripe. We saw that earlier on. And this is one of them. And I've got another one right here. They're going to be the same price. This is a local hybrid here and it's gorgeous. So it's a little bit elevated from the Pictum Tricolor. The Pictum Tricolor has a suede finish, but this one actually has a glossy finish. This is the Epipremnum Pinatum Variegata. This is the smaller one. And we've got some of the larger ones. They're kind of all over the nursery, so I cannot show you all of them. And I'm not going to entertain each of these shipments, just so you know, but I'm going to be shipping you around this size. And it's going to have good variegation. And they actually grow really fast, and you do need to uh, give them a pole to climb on for them to get big. I don't have ones that are already split leaves for sale. So yeah, uh, I'm going to be shipping them at random and first come first serve. The first ones to order will get the nicer and bigger leaves. There's quite a few of them here too. This one has more leaves already. Look at how beautiful. And this one's already fenestrated. So this is the winner here. Got some Alocasia Dragon Scale here. And these guys actually like to be in evenly or lightly moist but airy soil. They do really well in pond or self-watering pots. Um, I've got about four or five of these and by the time you get these in the mail, their leaves will probably die off but they live their lives here in their main stem. They can sprout many many leaves from the main stem here. In fact, sometimes they're sold without the leaves. They're sold only as the main stem. So if you receive this in the mail and it's already yellowing or whatever, just cut the whole foliage off back off with watering, look at the growing eye down there, and then just put it in really, really good conditions. It should sprout multiple, multiple vines. This is how I managed to get many of these. Uh, it's just because I bought them from a stump and I grew them out from the stump. Usually from the stumps, they can put out multiple vines per stump. And we've got a lot of these Amy Dream Zippelianums. 
some of these are already put out runners. They can propagate the runner, by the way, but they're already climbing up stakes. So there's quite a few of them here, quite a lot of them, and they're considered almost like a mature form. If you get them really young, the leaves are really, really immature to start with, but they are quite fast growers. So you, if you want to propagate them and start over, that's okay too. This is an Amedrium zippelianum variegated, and it's put out a runner and then finally a leaf, but the leaf has already fenestrated, so we can count on the next leaf to be fenestrated. This is what the parent plant actually looks like. It's actually a top cutting from this plant, and it's already put out two vines. I see one vine and two vines down here. That's amazing, and it goes all the way down here. The variegation is actually very, very stable, and they're actually very fast growing once they've got the conditions right. We've got some ZZ ravens here. I'm gonna be south sending one stalk and probably at around this side. There's actually two in here, there's a few plants living in there. So I'm gonna guarantee at least four leaves uh, and one stalk per order. And they're actually quite easy to rehab once you get them in your space, but they're not expensive anymore. They used to be quite a lot more expensive. Back here, we've got a Epiprenum skeleton key, pardon the fungicide that I just sprayed on last night. But they do want to climb. As you can see, this is ready to climb on a moss pole and the leaves are already quite big. They can get massive, actually. So I've got two of those. One is down here. This is another one. Pardon the burn rice hull and perlite on it. But yeah, it's living over here. This is one of the parent plant of the Epiprenum skeleton key. It's already quite big. As you can see, the leaves are the size of my palm. Got the little tail on this. So it's already climbing up a moss pole. So I'm gonna have to yank it off a moss pole to ship it. But you can always attach it because they do put out aerial roots like crazy. And this is what the parent plant looks like. I can't get up there, but it's bigger than my palm. That's how big they have gotten. Got some. Alocasia macrorhiza variegata here. One, two, three, four, five, five and six pots. They all have very good variegation. They need a bit of direct light. I give them my forest floor ponding mix and I water them lightly every day. They can be quite thirsty if you give them really bright conditions. Back here, we've got a Raphidophora decursiva. I'm sorry, this is all the way back behind my plant studio. Look at how beautiful this leaf is. This is easy to care for as a Raphidophora, but it's getting low light back here. So it's a little bit slow growing, but normally if you give it higher light, it will grow a lot faster. And this one has two leaves and it's grown from a single, I uh, see the fat main stem there. So it's grown as a new vine out of that. Oh, it's just actually three leaves. That's one that's facing away back there. All right, so we're in the realm of the Epipremnum Cebu Blue. As you can see here, the leaves are massive. As I propagated them as a big plant, there will be a video on these coming up soon. This is actually from our earlier Cebu Blue video. Some of the leaves are come out a bit juvenile, but if you give it something to climb on, it will catch up to this size very fast. I'm gonna be marking them at the same exact price. There's probably about five pots here, and some of them has already put out baby fenestrated leaves. I'm gonna put out actually a longer vine. This one has actually four leaves, but because I did not have space to give it a moss pool, it's trailing. So the leaves are gonna get smaller and smaller unless you give it something to climb on. Or you can chop it back to like a lower vine. And when the new vine comes up with a bigger leaf, you can start to let it climb up a moss pole. So this is actually a little bit delayed. I should have sold this a little bit earlier or gave it a pole, but I'm, again, I'm running out of time and space. But this is the fenestrate and this is, here's what the uh, leaf actually looks like. So this is another one here. This is, I believe, from, uh, let me see, this is, bigger than my palm and it's from this one leaf over here. It's difficult to track which pot they come out of actually. This one as well, they're all well rooted because we stuck them straight into soil and this was already put out a leaf here. We've got some Peperomia incana over here. It's got felted leaves, like very very fuzzy leaves and this is actually becoming common here in Indonesia and maybe it's not that easy to find where you are but it is actually an easy grower and I actually chose this to be in this video because they actually probably ship very well. It's a very succulent type leaves. They do like to be in very, very bright light. This is actually grown in medium light so it's a little bit etoliated. It's stretched, stretched out a bit but it's just got these beautiful peperomia leaves that are very, very fuzzy. Now here's an interesting one that I never thought I would export, but I have a few of these. This is the Dryomopsis, and it's variegated. So these are what the smaller ones look like. 
they come in these little balls and I have a feeling they actually do ship very well and this is such a unique plant that I have enjoyed having around so maybe I, yeah for this, this is a non-aeroid but I figured I might as well offer it up for exports because you may not be able to find this in your area there are actually tons of begonias here but we can't sell them to you uh, in internationally because they don't ship very well this is the maculata this is the boomer and this is actually my favorite the begonia manaus and this is the I can't remember the name of this this is the dark one with the really really red leaves but if you live locally in Indonesia we can have this but probably we're selling them in a local market at some point all right next we're moving to the realm of variegated monsteras there's going to be a lot of them so this is going to be a long session and i'm going to show you details on them but keep in mind a lot of them are in bad shape because unlike my new uh, old home with my dad i can actually move these around get, giving them better light giving them better access to watering uh, routine and all that but here they just live wherever i can't really move these around they're getting as best light as i can provide it at this point and yeah but with these guys you can actually count on the main stem for uh, for variegation and actually this one here let me see this one here will put out a completely green leaf i think let me see so that's the newest leaf yeah so the one before that is a little bit crispy but the new leaf looks fine it's health like and it's very risky when you buy one of these health moon because yeah as you can see here in the patio the next leaf is pretty much going to be predominantly green but I can also look lower down the note yeah there's actually uh, one note here that's available and let me look at the growing eye I don't think this one this one may be variegated I mean the stem you see the, the white strip here and then there's another white strip here so these are gonna give you a few chances of variegation so yeah, this is a little bit of a risky gamble. Uh, unfortunately, this is the first one that we saw. Like you may actually lose variegation, but you may have to actually cut it up later. And one of the lower notes produce variegation. But when you pr get these white flag monsteras, that's, that is the risk that you always run into. So, so that wasn't a good start. <laughs> Sorry about that. And this one here is um, grown very high up here. And I'm curious to see what's happening here because the newest leaf is white and it's getting excellent light here. So this leaf has already fallen off. I think it's probably brown up and fallen off. So when you buy this one here, uh, you can study the variegation as well on the stem. When you buy this one, you really may have to chop it up because something is wrong for it to produce a small leaf like that. I actually suspect that there might be a root rot down there. All right, my suspicion was well-founded. So there were a few root rot down here. It's just been rained on every day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this now and then chop up the uh, rotten ends. But as you can see, there's still a lot of good roots here. They're still very, very good roots. So, and then look at all these new roots that are coming out. So this is actually doing okay. But yeah, when your plants start putting out small leaves, there is a ch chance that it's not, um, what do you call it? That it's got root rot or some of the roots have dried off completely and it's not getting enough nutrients to supply to the new leaf. And there's many, many cuts. I've cut once here and I cut once here. So there are actually many nodes in here. So if you're feeling adventurous, this is actually a good one to get. As you can see, the, the variegation on the stem is freaking incredible. And with a specimen like this, with a small leaf at the end, you're really not gonna count on this being a gorgeous plant because it's really so big. So when you purchase this, you're gonna have to chop it up and propagate them, preferably with single node cuttings. And with the bottom part here, you can actually keep it and maybe chop you know, up to two nodes here. You can leave two leaves on and then it, it may sprout two branches or maybe even more from down below. This next one here, it may not look like much. So this is the propagated leaf and it's put out a few green leaves. But actually this one put out an all white leaf that I actually took off because when they put out an all white leaf, they're going to steal energy from the plant. And then this one new green leaf showed up. But if you look back here, there, do you see that? That is a new leaf. This is uh, looking all white now, but if you look at the variegation on the stem, it's got some green on it. So this one new node here, new leaf with a new node, with a potential uh, of a vine that is balanced with green and white. This is a pretty good 
a contender, but it is still a little bit risky, but it is a very, very good candidate. And I actually would recommend this too for those of you who are feeling a little bit more adventurous. For this one here, this is going to be a very, very cheap plant because the risk is very, very uh, high that it's going to turn green. So the top leaf here, there's a little bit of variegation here, but if you look at the back of the node, actually, you know what? I'm wrong. If you look at the back of the patio here, this next leaf may be a little bit variegated. I don't know if you can tell, look at that stripe down the middle. So this is not as cheap as you think, I guess. But if you look at the variegation on the lower node here, look at that, it's very, very nice variegation. So if the line meets one of the growing eye, it will give you a variegated plant. So this is one that you want to grow out and also chop and prop at some point. And there are many nodes down below, as you can see, I'm not going to open this up. But this is a very, very good promise, uh, promising specimen as well, provided that you're willing to uh, have a bit of a risk and you're willing to propagate it later on in its life. This next one here is a balanced variegation. Let me look at the latest leaf. There is a little bit of a white stripe coming down, but it's not highly variegated by any means. There's some variegation on the stem. So this is considered a low variegation specimen and it's going probably at a very good price. Next up here, this is a bit of a challenge. So it's put out mostly green leaves with a little bit of variegation here and there. And if you look down below, this is the leaf that we propagated with. There's not a lot of uh, variegation on this one. There are bits of white. There are bits of white here too. Uh, but it goes all the way down. There are a few nodes down in the soil level and down below, which I'm not going to unpot for you. Again, we're gonna go with lightning speed with this shopping experience. So this is going to be one that is a bit risky, but if you don't mind, I mean, uh, the worst case scenario is you might end up with a green monstera, but if you propagate it, you may actually end up with a few variegated leaves, but this process will take a long time. And the next one here, this is also a low variegation one. It's got very, very low economic variegation, and I don't see signs of variegation on the next leaf. Just being honest with you, there's a bit of variegation there, but I'm not going to unearth the main stem as well because I'm not sure what it looks like, but it's got established root systems. So this is a bit of a risk, but I'm letting this one go for any uh, risk takers out there. The next one here has got a few leaves and all of the leaves are wonderfully variegated. The new leaf is a little bit flag with a little bit of a uh, splash here. And because I was potting it to check for a root rod and it's fine. There's actually very, very good roots here. Maybe a bit, tiny, tiny bit of rot, but I'm gonna take it off and then back off with watering for a few days to let this recover. But this was sitting in rain, so yeah, it's doing really well considering. So yeah, that's the leaf. This is a very, very good contender to have. The next one here is showing signs of miswatering. This is probably from under or over watering, but the new leaf looks like this. So it shows a lot of promise. Actually, this is a little bit on the white side and I remember I kept this out of the bright indirect light in lower light so I can promote more green on this and it successfully put out a balanced leaf. So this is actually a good cutting to have and a really, really nice established uh, look at the aerial root from the, from the branch here. It's doing really well. So I kind of recommend this if you want to give it a bit of rehab and you don't mind trimming off these leaves later on because these leaves are already halfway gone. Even this one in transition, in shipping, this leaf may have to suffer. But if you let this keep growing, if you manage to rescue it, it should be a very nice variegated plant eventually. The next baby here, look at how cute this new leaf is. So this is the leaf that we propagated with. And this is what the roots look like. So it's doing really well. It's ready to take off actually. It took a while to get here. So it's gonna start putting out new leaf after leaf. Let me check the variegation on the stem here. Yeah, it looks good. It's, I don't know if the camera's gonna focus, but I see some stripes of white and green. This is a good one to start with. All right, so this doesn't look like much, but if you've been following my channel, I did show you how to recognize variegation on these. Look at this next leaf. The next leaf, focus, is gonna be wonderfully variegated. This is where the, you see the sharp point here? This is where the new leaf is gonna come from. It's gonna take that variegation with it. So this is a new vine coming from a main stem here. And this is what the roots look like. It's looking super healthy. And because of all this green on this one leaf, this is the first leaf that it sprouted. That means that this is going to be photosynthesizing. It's gonna be providing food for the next leaves, which is pretty variegated. This is a good one, actually. If you're able to overlook the all green first leaf, 
This next one here is a little bit of a challenge. So as you can see, the latest leaf is all white. And actually, we I did take off one leaf here and another leaf before because every other leaf that it put out, it's been all white like this. So this is just how it's burned. There is a bit of green here. So I kept this in low light actually to promote more green. And if you look at here, I'm actually already AR layering it because I am counting on the lower notes. Look at how variegated uh, this, the note is. This potentially can give you many plants if you propagate it with single node cuttings. But later, you might want to let this plant uh, establish in your area. You might want to let it uh, fertilize it a bit, let it grow bigger leaves. And of course, you want to air layer it. And then when you cut single node cuttings, you already have roots. And then from there, you have many chance of getting a proper plant. So this is one that needs a lot of work, but if you can get it right, you'll get a few plants out of this. But this is for more advanced uh, plant parent, more advanced propagators. If you're new, do not even think about it because variegated monsters are not the easiest thing to propagate. But if you air layer it, you'll increase your chances of propagation. And here's one that I actually unpotted again to check for root rot, but it's doing really well. This is doing really well. So this is the newest leaf that it put out. And this is the stem. So it's not in focus. Where are you? Yeah, there you are. Sorry. Yeah, it's very wonderfully variegated and the roots look really good. So this is a good cutting. To By the way, I'm not going to be able to uh, unpot each one of you if you want to buy a plant. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot unpot and check the roots for each transaction and each plant until maybe before we ship it because for a lot of the plants, I'm sure they're okay. I only check the ones that are that I suspect have root rot, but most of them actually have been growing fine. So I'm not gonna be able to run to my nursery every five minutes to take photos of you. And I, it's not good for the plant when you keep unpotting them and you take the photo of the roots and all that. And I wasn't, I wouldn't even be sure if you're gonna buy it. So I will only check the roots before shipping. Of course, if I notice something is off, I will not ship it. I will uh, work my way around it. But basically, I'm not going to be able to unpot every single time. But this is, has really, really good roots moving forward. This is a very good contender. This next one is actually very promising only because, uh, first of all, I'm not gonna open it because I'm pretty sure there's not gonna be any root rot. This is a narrower pot. It's catching less water and I can see that the media has been kept pretty dry. And if you look at the main stem here, look at all this variegation on the stem. This is beautiful, wonderfully variegated. Of course, this one side is a little bit more green, but that's okay. Uh, let me show you the latest leaf. So this is almost all white and this is white, but hang on to your horses. Look at the, the back of the patio here. You see that bit of green? The next leaf is gonna be wonderfully variegated. It's gonna be balanced with variegation, probably very similar to this one leaf here. And if again, for a lot of these, it's a recurring theme for my variegated monsteras, but you should propagate this at some point. In fact, all plants are meant to be propagated at some point anyway. So you wanna look at the notes here for chance of future plants that are gonna be wonderfully variegated because this plant itself is, is a goner. Look at how many leaves have been crisped up. And they do that in the variegated portion when you don't water it correctly, uh, when you let it dry out or you overwater it. And also the white parts of the leaves are just a little bit more prone to bacteria and fungal spots because they have less immune system than a healthy all green monstera. So yeah, this is a, a very good contender. I actually do recommend this one for those of you who want to propagate and who want to rescue this a bit and see it in better light. And this is one with a little bit of a crisp and it's got mostly green leaves, but I'm going to show you uh, what it, the new leaf look like in a minute. But with this, you do want to cut it, but you want to leave a little bit of the crisp when you cut it because it will continue to spread. Of course, it's not sightly as well. So this is also one with very uh, half moon, half variegated note here. So there are actually a few notes down below that you can propagate from. But I'm looking at here, this is the latest leaf. And if you look at the new you see where the new leaf is going to emerge from this sharp point here? It's going to be wonderfully variegated in the next leaf. So this is actually a very good plant to get. I would actually kind of recommend this. Uh, it's a bit risky, but it's very, very low risk. And you can also propagate from a lower node always. There's a few of them to go around. There is some issue going on here. Uh, hang on, what happened here? The new leaf this uh, this brought here this is the new leaf and the new leaf is coming out from here but something ate it something ate this i don't know what happened but usually they do recover quite well but i'm gonna have to offer a discount for this plant because something has 
uh, chew this up. I don't know what exactly, for an animal or something. But this is wonderfully calloused over and I feeling it. It's hard, it's stiff, it's not wet. But I would not keep this too wet. So I would actually grow this indoors, but it is for the most part still okay. As you can see the main stem is uncompromised. It's just a little bit of a chunk here that is missing. And again, the new leaf is actually coming from here, from back here. You may actually lose one of the growing eye in here. Although in my experience, growing eye usually goes in the opposite side of the aerial root. So the growing eye may be on the other side of the stem, around here. So yeah, there's that. Let's move on. The next one here, this is actually a parent plant. And the new leaf is looking wonderfully variegated and fenestrated. This is gonna fetch a bit of a higher price than before. But look at all these leaves. So this is actually a pretty good specimen. I did cut this one leaf off because it's put on an all white leaf. But other than that, it looks fine. Every single leaf here, of course, I would need to cut that off. And I made a cut here and I made the cut here before. So this is actually a mother plant. Usually mother plants have a lot of root system around here. So this is going to be one that will grow really fast. Really, really nice specimen to have. The next one here, this is also a mother plant. I made the cut right here before. And this goes to show that this is probably going to be very robust. There's probably a lot of good roots in there, usually to support a faster growing plant. And the first leaf will look like this and it's growing steadily up in size. This is a native leaf with the variegation. This is considered all right, not the best variegation. But let's check out the, this is where the new leaf is coming from. It's going to be wonderfully variegated, maybe about 30%, my guess, 30% variegated and mostly green. So if you're into lightly variegated ones, kind of like this, this is about 15% variegated. Uh, so yeah, this is one that is a good contender and also it's got many notes down below that you can propagate from and the notes look promising. Look at all these stripes that is going all around, all around the plant. The next one here, this is the parent plant. And of course the leaf is tired with the cutting. And this is the first leaf that it put out. And this is the next leaf. And don't be worried about the variegation here. Don't fret about it because look at this sharp point here. This is where the new leaf is coming from. And it's gonna be wonderfully variegated in the next leaf. And this is what the main stem looks like. Look at the main node here. Wonderfully variegated all around. This is a very good specimen. And this one, let me put this down. This has put out crazy long aerial roots. So it's just dangling. So what I'm gonna do after this is I'm gonna just wound it round around in the pot so that this can turn into roots as well. And I opened it, look at the roots. Sorry, that's not mealybugs, that's perlite by the way. But check out the, sorry, I'm like not focusing correctly. Okay, because the phone was in my pocket so it just kept going in different settings. But anyways, I digress. So this is, this is what the roots look like. My goodness, it's amazing. I really recommend this actually. This is a very good one to have. Very nice promise on the next, uh, for Nick variegation and very good gene, gene, basically, very good DNA on this. The next one here, this I kinda don't recommend. This makes me a bad seller when I don't recommend my own plants. But this is the leaf that we propagated with. This is the stem that's come out of it. And it's only very lightly, very, this is none. And this one has very, very little variegation on the leaves. But this doesn't mean that this won't turn into a variegated plant, it doesn't. Um, if you look at the, the main strip here, this is the back of the petiole of the latest leaf. There's a white stripe here. And I can't see yet where the new leaf is coming from. But if the leaf comes out from this white portion and it meets here, the next leaf would be wonderfully awesome variegated plant. But it's too early to tell this is a high risk plant. I would say this is a 50-50% chance. And buyer beware, I guess. But this is a mother plant. So it's got very, very good roots on below. And this node is being used by this vine. So there's no more node in here to, um, you know, to put out another vine. So you only have one chance. And let me look around here. And your chances are, again, there's some variegation on here. Your chances are quite low, but it's there. 50-50, as I mentioned. The next one here is a little bit complicated. It's definitely been miscared for. I believe this is the first leaf that we propagated it with. This is a second leaf. And then this one, I think we lost most of the leaf, so we can't see what it looks like. Here, this is the next one. The next one looks like this. So I think we lost, this is mostly white, I believe. That's why we lost most of it. This one is mostly green. And then it's mostly white. I, I think I, I'm seeing the pattern here. It's white, green, white, green. This is the green with a little bit of white here. So this, a plant like this actually, as you can see, there are many, many notes down below you could cut. 
because we did lose some of the leaves already and the aerial roots look really promising they look very good for propagation so actually this is good for immediate propagation if you got this plant you decide to buy it this is one that you can chop it off right away and the top cutting here you can cut right here because this is the last aerial root and then root this in water look at the beautiful new roots that's coming up so this is the latest leaf and let me see the sorry no this is the latest leaf what am i talking about this almost green one this is latest leaf and the new see there's a new leaf that's coming from here it's going to be mostly white i can tell already from here do you see that it's gonna have a tiny bit of green but you really will have to propagate this plant and where the new node meets one of the variegation here like the growing eye you will have a more perfect plant but you are because I don't see any growing eye yet, this is still a young plant so I would wait for a few more leaves before I propagate it but there are many many chances here for different a whole new outcome for new plants this one is a perfect retail specimen look at the beautiful variegation on this this is actually my best one so far I think uh, because of its size it's a good size to ship this is the original leaf the new second one and then the third and then this is the newest leaf and let me check on the main stem the main stem looks wonderfully variegated and let me check the back of the patio of the latest leaf yeah it's balanced variegation this is a guaranteed variegated plant this is awesome and because this is a little, a little bit fenestrated this one is not the next one will probably be very fenestrated and this one's perfect size for a moss pole as you can see it's just starting to take off so i would just insert a moss pole back here and let this newest leaf root into it this is a good one i recommend this this one is actually not recommended but if you don't mind a green monstera this is one that is a good chance that you can take there's some variegations here and there lightly variegated plant throughout uh, but let me like look at the main stem so the main stem there's some variegations still all around it so you do need the growing eye to coincide with that but there are actually many notes on here it's like one two three four five i see at least five notes down below so yeah if you let this grow out a bit more and you chop it up per node there's a chance that you might get variegation this there's some variegation still on the old leaf here so this is one that you really have to be a little bit more open-minded in case you get an all green plant but i'm letting this go because i'm really not keeping this i have no space for the place that i'm moving next to there's one more here that is a little bit sad looking look at this leaf that's come off but we did check it a few days ago for root rot and nothing's rotted off somehow uh, so this is a plant that you really will want to cut up as soon as possible let me check out the main stem and take this off uh, let me check out the main so this is mostly white i think i put it here because it's mostly white but the new leaf is shown really good promise of good variegation so you could actually grow this out a bit let it put out more perfect new leaf but then you will have to cut it up at some point there are many many notes down here you can do wet stick with single note and there's a really established root system here so this is another one that you really have to be a more of an advanced uh, plant grower and propagator to get a few potential nodes out of this. Now, this is a beautiful specimen for the variegated monstera. Every leaf is wonderfully variegated, and the new leaf is beautiful. It's not fenestrated yet because it's a young plant, but look at all these roots. This is a prime plant. And if you look at the back of the patio of the latest leaf, the next leaf is going to be wonderfully variegated. This is a very, very good one to consider. The next one here, this is a little bit risky because it's a half moon and the latest leaf is actually white in color. So let me check the patio. Yeah, the next leaf is going to be pretty balanced. I would say there's a little bit of green on there. Did you see that? So yeah, as you can see, the white flag monsters, there's a chance that they can easily turn all green or all white. But because of this, they are a little bit more priced because it's very difficult to find the perfect flag variegation. All right, and the next one here, this is the first leaf, the second leaf, and then this is the newest leaf. It's all white, unfortunately. But let me check out the back of the patio uh, here. It should be wonderfully green in the next one, if you see here. Uh, this little sharp point here the parts partly green this is a little bit risky but it is still a really good one to start if you can grow this out uh, for a few more leaves you should be able to have a few nodes here to propagate from and then from there you may get uh, if you propagate it you may get one with uh, more balanced 
uh, variegation from there. This here, this is the first leaf and this is the new one that came out of it. It's looking wonderful. Actually, it's got a beautiful stripe all around the patio. So this is one that is a good batch. And by the time you see this video, this leaf, this new leaf would have hardened off. In fact, a new one may have been already on the way. But look at the variegation all around it. This is a good one to start with. This next one is amazing. So this is the first leaf. Second leaf and the newest leaf is still hardening off. But look at this beauty here. This is really, really shown signs. Hang on, I'm trying to film with one hand. The next leaf is going to be a little bit variegated. Right in the center of the screen, you see that green stripe and the white. That is where the new leaf will come from. This is a nice balanced variegation one. Very promising. And this is also in a chunky potting mix. So everything grown in this room has gotten the IP treatment rather than the ones outside. They were rained on every day. So they're a little bit faster growing here. So for those of you wondering if plant care looks better outdoors, since it's easier, you can just let it rain on. No, indoor plant care uh, shows a lot more signs of promise. All right, so this next one here, uh, it's still very young. You can't really tell, so there's a bit of a risk here, but by the time you order it, this should be uh, sprouted and fully hardened. But there is some green on the leaves and some white. So this is probably, if I look at the main patio here, this is probably about 80% white and 20% green judging from this here. This one here, uh, when you see something like this, this is probably an all white leaf that I cut off, but it's starting to put out a little bit of green. I've been growing this in lower light, so it's been growing a little bit slower, but this is the newest leaf. And let me follow right down the center of the screen. Uh, the next leaf will be a little tiny, tiny bit green. If you see the, if you follow my uh, pattern here on the, uh, the center of the screen, tiny bit of green. There's hope, but it's a little bit risky, but there are a few nodes to work with. Let me see what the main stem looks like. It's hard to tell, it's under the soil. So you may want to grow this out, but it's going to be slow because it's mostly white. And then you may have to propagate it at some point. But there is some promise here. And this one here, this is a goner. I just wanted to show you an example. So everything here is going to be all white. There's no green at all on the patio here none at all none whatsoever so this i may have to prop just see if i can see it find a lower node that's available and try to cut it up and propagate it all right i guess i'm gonna bid you farewell for now there may be a part two as i find more plants in the next few weeks to go but thank you so much for this tour i hope you've enjoyed it and there are a lot of care tips and some of my experiences growing some of these plants that i hope you found useful and for those of you who are purchasing the plants i want to say thank you in advance for browsing and for shopping here uh, please don't overwhelm me as i mentioned before i don't know how many people will actually be ordering there's only one of me and there's many of you i'll try to serve you guys as best as i can but again this is a plant purge this is a clearance sale Keep that in mind. So I'm selling things cheap and please do expect a little bit less hands-on customer service from me. Uh, I'm a botanist on Instagram. Feel free to reach out for any plant care related questions. But for any plant purchasing, please uh, reach out to at onlyplants.store, which is my Instagram account for transactions. All right, I bid you farewell and thank you so much again. Take care, you guys. Bye.